We have one last paper for this modeling session. It's going to be presented by Xu Tao. So Xu Tao is a researcher of the IoT and Pervasive Technologies area from the Linux Foundation, which is located in Torino, Italy. Um, she will be presenting today a paper called Model-Based Methodology and Framework for Design and Management of Next Generation IoT Systems. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Xu Tao uh, from Lynx Foundation. Now I'm going to present uh, a model-based methodology and a framework for design and the management of next generation IoT systems. And uh, this work has been done within the scope of EU 2020 project Green IoT. And uh, thanks for the contributors from uh, Lynx Foundation. CA Siemens, STM, and the University of Grenoble. So, nowadays, with the emerging and the more complex scenarios in IoT domain, it introduces many challenges, such as the communication between the uh, different IoT platforms, and uh, consequently, the IoT system management and monitoring become harder and harder. As a result, the complexity of the IoT applications development has been increased dramatically. What's more, the cost efficient requirements and the physical constraints of the IoT system validation is becoming a harsh issue. So to cope with these harder shifts, and we proposed a model-based engineering approach to ease the development of the IoT systems. And in this approach, it offers, first is a modeling methodology based on different abstraction layers. And then it enables the IoT service composition to support the interoperability <coughs> among the data engineers systems. And a formal verification and validation of the models is also supported. There is also a code generator to automatically generate the application artifacts in such a way to ease the development phase of the IoT application developers. And in the end, we also provide a code simulation approach and which is enabled to monitor the IoT device and with the mixed virtual and real entities at runtime. So the modeling methodology we proposed is shown in this slide. And as you can see here, we have three different uh, abstraction levels. From high to low, there is the system uh, models, which focuses on the IoT ser services composi composability provided by the IoT devices and uh, the overall system behavior. And then this model can be refined as the software models, and uh, which is the formal component models and uh, to provide the computing capabilities of the components. To validate the applications and uh, before deploy it, so we, uh, it also enables to visualize the IoT devices, the physical devices. So there is also the possibility to develop this virtual IoT um, physical device models in order to validate the system before deploy in a real infrastructure. So based on this methodology, and we have designed this modeling and verification framework. In this framework, there are four main components. The first one is the IoT modeling language. And here we have the system modeling language, the software modeling language, and also the physical layer modeling language. 
each of the language is corresponding to each abstraction layer. Just one point to be highlighted here is in the system modeling language, and we can model the interaction behaviors, the procedure behaviors, as well as the event-based behaviors. And the system modeling language is extended to be integrated with the W3C standards is the same description which aims to describe the IoT services provided by the IoT platforms. And this language is also extended to synchronize with the SenseNectar data model. As a reminder, the SenseNectar is an industrial gateway for different IoT devices and to provide the APIs to the upper layer application. Uh, applications. And then the second main component is the Brain-IoT modeling tool. In this modeling tool, we have the C-term model, which will take the C-term modeling language as input and uh, generate these uh, C-term level models. And these models will be refined by the syntactically, uh, syntactical transformation uh, to the software models. And another modular is the physical device model, which is enabled to uh, develop the virtual IoT devices. So, and these software models, and then will pass through the code generator. And this generator will uh, generate the software artifacts and to be in, uh, stored in this uh, artifacts repository. And uh, in the other hand, the code generator also provides the capability and uh, to generate uh, the monitoring description. And this model, modeling description is ready to be deployed to the IoT gateways and in order to provide the features like the monitoring at the monitor at the runtime features. Mm, all the models created, uh, developed by the modeling language, and uh, they are reusable, will be eventually stored in the modeling language. So it will be easier to retrieve, to search, and also to update. So in order to implement uh, such a framework, and we adopted the technologies as shown in this picture. Starting from the system level models, and we used the LTML model, and which is, uh, can be modeled leveraging the Papyrus modeling tool. So from the left side, you can see this model provides the possibility and to refine this system model to the BIP model, and the BIP model is the representation of the software model, the software level models, and it has the provide the capability for the formal validation of the models. And from the right side, we can see the LTML model is enabled to generate to sync generate and also synchronize with the data model used by the uh, IoT gateways. And in this way, from the model, we can monitor and also control the behaviors of the IoT devices. And here, since we will generate the uh, software artifacts from the BIP model, and the software artifacts here will be Java-based and also will be packaged as the OSGL bundles. And this is because leveraging the OSGL, we have uh, the, can adopt the features like the modularity and also the dynamic deployment. And the third point here is from the LTML model and it is extended 
to generate a thin description, which is a compliant with a W3C standard. So by this link, we can link in the IoT device service with a concrete models we modeled here as a high level model. And in the uh, two models the IoT physical device, and uh, we leverage the work from our partner, from ST. And as shown in the lower part of the slides, and in this, micro, uh, this model, and uh, we have a microprocessor unit, and uh, it is implemented using the current text M4 STM32. And it can take uh, the data from the sensors and uh, process it and also ferment the structure of the data. And here there is another unit is to provide the connectivity towards the outside world. And this connectivity enables the upper layer applications and uh, to retrieve the data from this simulated model. So how our uh, approach and uh, the framework is used in the real scenario. And here I'm going to give two use case study and to illustrate and uh, how this modeling framework can be used in the uh, real infrastructure. And the first one is based uh, in the scenario of service robotic. And as shown, shown in the diagram here, and uh, here the scenario is we have a, a warehouse, and in the warehouse we have a loading area and the storage area. In the loading area, we have a fleet of robots and also a couple of carts. And the carts is waiting to be carried by the robots and uh, to unload it in the storage area. And uh, within the, the way towards to the storage area and uh, the robots have to pass through the door. So here it includes the interaction between uh, robots and uh, the environment like the door is, we can see it as a Mm, the uh, blockage of the environment. So, and uh, just uh, uh, to be more clear, and uh, the uh, robot is equipped then is equipped with a camera, and it can store, scan the uh, QR code on the cart and also on the door. So, to implement this such a uh, uh, system. And uh, we are starting from the IoT ML system models, and uh, we modeled uh, the OT, uh, there is a OT street is to control the overall behaviors and of the door of the robots. And then we defined uh, the interface of the interactions between each component. And uh, these system models, and uh, as mentioned before, and it will be refined as a more uh, uh, as um, as the software uh, level components models and which is a BIP model and then pass through the Java code generator and we can get the functional code of the OHS reader, the door and also the robots and then we wrapping this plain Java code and as the OSG bundles and uh, to be deployed in the real infrastructure. So, and uh, the, in the block, the upper block, and uh, it uh, demonstrates, and uh, there is we pro, uh, this approach, and uh, is to easy the work of the IoT application developers. And uh, instead of from uh, scratching all the source code, and uh, we can, leverage a model-based approach. And then at the run time, after the uh, generated artifacts is running in the real infrastructure, and here and in the left, we can see 
and uh, by integrating with the uh, papyrus modeling tool and uh, the status of the robot can be monitored and uh, at runtime and uh, we can visualize the status change of the robot from one uh, state and uh, to another state and uh, in the other side by the integrating with synchronize with the Synsynect data model and uh, we can monitor uh, to initialize the configuration of the warehouse map. For example, we can configure the coordinates of the robots, of the cards, and of the destination of each card. And uh, in the other side, and we also can control the robots and how many robots will be in a fleet, and like the robot numbers and it can be dynamically changed. And the second use case study is based on a critical water infrastructure man uh, management infrastructure. And here, this use case is based on the city water supply, uh, which is a partner from Colonia in Spain. And the goal is to develop an adaptive, smart, automatic, controllable management system. And this system will be leverage some uh, machine learning like the predictable models and uh, to first increase the security of the water supplies. And then we also aim to optimize the underlying cost as the last uh, uh, goal is to give the more accurate indicators and uh, for the decision making. And uh, uh, for example, like uh, the uh, also provide some adaptive control behaviors and uh, in order to react to some abnormal situations. And here, in these slides, and uh, there it shows the system architecture. And as we can see here, and uh, at first, uh, the, uh, there is the end device, and the end device is uh, like uh, the sensors, which is uh, giving the measurements. And uh, these measurements will pass through uh, the travel from the network and then stored in a database. And then the data will be analyzed by using a anomalous detection algorithm and in order to detect the abnormal measurements and in order to give the warnings to the operators. But here, since we aim to use our approach and to design and implement a control system. So this part will be no more manually, but it will be automatically to realize the resilience control. And this control system and will give the commands to the actuators like the pumps, like the valves, and to open and close, and in order to make the current abnormal situation to reduce the damage of the current abnormal situation. So in this such a, a system architecture, how can we modeling framework helps? Here we have three uh, main contributions on in this uh, architecture. And the first point is before we um, like develop all the IoT applications and then to, uh, since we have to use the machine learning technology and uh, to train the model for the anomalous detection. But due to the uh, physical device constraints and uh, it, we cannot collect uh, such a big amount of data and in order to train this model. So we use our modeling approach and to model the IoT devices and in order to generate the reliable data and in order to train, the, uh, train this model. 
as the input data set. And uh, the second point here is this control system. And we developed it using the, uh, the BrainLT system models. And in order to model these adaptive behaviors, and we analyzed the possible abnormal situations and then also uh, identified the corresponding react actions. And so we could use our model and to model this control system. And then the second, the third, last point is um, after the system is running and we are also intend, we are also have the value and uh, to know and uh, what's the current status of your critical device, like uh, the, the, the valves, and you want to know how much it is open now, all the pumps and uh, what's the status of it now. And so by integrating this device and uh, with the SenseNet gateway, and uh, we are able to supervise the current uh, values the current status of such kind of critical device. So this is how our proposed modeling approach can be used in the real uh, industrial systems and how can we like to easier our work in such, in such critical and also complex systems. So just to be conclude, and our work, we, in, our, in this work, and we proposed the model-based methodology and the framework is to aims to help for the next generation LT systems. And first, the system level models, which is to capture the system uh, functionalities and the behaviors in order to refine the software modeling. And I also through these system level models, and we can create a comprehensive system and also universe the modeling languages. And the second point is by integrating with the W3C thing description, we can link our model to the real device. And in such a way, we can link the uh, the, the model is generic, but the model to be applied in the IoT device and uh, it can be dynamically linked towards this real device. And the third point is that uh, leveraging this code generator and uh, we can simply uh, reduce the workload of the IoT application developers and the system application validation, it can help the end user and to reduce first the physical uh, physical infrastructure like the device budget cost, and then it also can guarantee the safety of your system before deploy your applications in the real infrastructure to avoid some possible damage and directly to your physical device and especially in the critical infrastructures and the last but not the least features is the model at runtime and leveraging this approach and we can remotely visualize and also control the IoT device runtime status. Okay, this is all the contents uh, for this work. And uh, thanks for your attention. If you have some questions, and uh, you can ask. Okay, um, we are just six minutes uh, late, but I think we manage to stay in time. So if someone from the audience has any questions, please just put them in the chat. Uh, since this is the last session, we will have the break
breakout session also here. So there's no need for you to switch <clears throat> to meetings. So what we can do now is we can, well, uh, since we already had this talk, I, I do have a question, Shu. Um, I don't know if I understood correctly, but this runtime environment you have in this framework is for monitoring, right? For monitoring in real time. Have you thought about um, extending this uh, runtime in order to also execute, um, I don't know, modify the system somehow? Yeah, actually, I know now uh, by the modeling framework now and uh, leveraging this IoT ML system models and our, uh, the final goal is not only to monitor the status, but uh, we also aim to like prototype the behaviors and uh, directly to push these behavior models in the remote uh, device. So there might be some uh, like a runtime run configuration changes. And uh, now we are working on this aspect uh, and uh, to control it uh, directly from the model. Okay, so the idea is that you actually implement this feature, right? Yes, yes. Thank you.